Why do you always say the bright bread? Actually, now we're going to talk about the style that, like, you kind of do on this record, but not really. But we started <laughs> we started with this uh, sort of modern R&B soul thing, and then it kind of got a little more pop towards the end. But tell me about some of your influences, um, like, specifically Eloise and how you wanted to build, like, that kind of sound. Like, is that, have you seen them before? And um, uh, tell me about your experience with them. Yeah, I definitely, I think Eloise and Still Woozy are like two of the artists that I'm constantly listening to. Yeah. Like never get tired of their work ever. <laughs> and I, the funny thing is Eloise, I actually discovered through Bruno Major, um, who I may or may not have started listening to um, because of a boy, but that's irrelevant. And <laughs> come a little closer to the mic. Yeah. And, uh, but um, so then I went to a concert um, for Bruno Major and Eloise opened for him. And she actually ended up staying for a couple songs that they sang together, and I loved her. I fell cool. in love with, like, her voice and her style of music and just her personality. Like, everything about her was super cool, and I really vibed with it, and I love her music. I'm sad that, like, she finally came out with another album, and I'm so happy about that. Um, but there's just something about it that is just really enticing. Like, I do, I do love R&B. Yeah, and I yeah. like that her songs are almost difficult to hear when you're thinking about them without the music for a moment. Hmm. I don't okay. know how to explain that, but they aren't like the same all the way through. It's not like a super simple melody that you listen to, and yeah, or something like like a Katy Perry song, like Firework or something. Yeah, yeah, I think. Th- Production is going that way, mm-hmm. and it's and it's fun because there's there's a lot less rules now in terms of uh, how a song needs to go. Katy Perry's a great example. Yeah, it's a pretty classical structure mm-hmm. um, to the production, and the song the songs could be the same on an artist like Eloise or, or Katy Perry, but how the track is built is really yeah. different. And so, even though we kind of went a little more towards the pop thing, I tried to make it weird the whole time so that it was constantly changing, probably changing too much. (laughs) But I think that's interesting, and I think that's kind of like where music is now, is that it's changing a lot. So Mm -hmm. a verse will be really different than the next verse. Yeah. And then the choruses don't really match up. Mm -hmm. And this whole... um, structure that we used to have of like it's gotta be here and then there's one more thing and then there's here and then there's one more thing we're kind of getting rid of that and I think you uh, listening to Eloise um, <clears throat> and Bruno Major like they did that and we kind of worked some of those tricks into our production mm-hmm. which was cool but I know you really uh, you saw them right? And yeah yeah that was cool when, where did you see them? Um, I saw them in L.A. I can't remember the exact name of the theater, but um, it was a pretty small, like, it felt very, like, it felt like a very intimate Intimate concert. Intimate show, yeah. Yeah. Those are fun. And um, it was just those two, and it was, it was super cool. And I went with my friend. It was, it was on my birthday, actually. It was my 16th birthday. And um, so I was there watching them, and it was, it was really fun. And they had great onstage chemistry, which always just makes, like, duets that much more fun when they both look like they're having a great time and yeah. they like each other. It's not like we're tolerating you for this yeah. little performance, this little moment. And that once, was really nice. I once saw Guns N' Roses and it was the saddest thing. I mean, they were, I don't want to like talk trash, so I'm not going to say that they were bad, but I'm just going to say they hate each other. And it's depressing to watch people <laughs> who hate each other yeah. on stage playing with right. each other. And, like, contrast that with, like, a, yeah, I don't know. Let me, yeah. yeah. Like, the Foo Fighters seem like they're good friends. Yeah. You know? Does that, do you get My that vibe? My mom loves yeah, them. Yeah, your mom likes them. Yeah. That's, um, they're a band that just seems like they're friends. Mm-hmm. You know, the Beatles seem like they were really good friends. Yeah. Um, I think there's something, like, that's so much more powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and especially with a duet, you know, like, um, what was the, um, Oh, I'm drawing a blank. The duet from the movie with um, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, Shallows? Yeah, you just kind of felt that they both got into that character and yeah. they believed it, right? 
That's what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to feel like. They did really well on yeah. The Star is Born. That was... Yeah. Yeah. That's good. how That's how I think um, you delivered the body I was born in. I, I think that is like so... You really believed that character, what you were saying, at that moment. And it's like... It, that's the coolest part about music is capturing like that thing. I think we nailed it on that one song. Most, most nailed it. <laughs> um, and we, we, we got something great in every song. This is like an advertisement against the other two songs. I don't mean it to be that, <laughs> but there's something really cool about, about when you express that, that was, that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, are there other moments, are there moments in these recordings that you think are special like that having listened to them um i mean it's it's definitely weird thinking about that because i'm like well like i wrote them like i you know there's moments in all of them but um it was just i think with that song especially that was a song that i think i completed it within you know probably an hour of sitting down and it was like a song that was more a poem than anything. I think that's how I started songwriting was I loved poems. And I was good at poems, but I always had trouble mm. structuring it with melody and stuff. Yeah. Cause poems don't really have poems have structure, but poems do not have structure the way that songs do in my yeah. opinion, because <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, stanza, 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 stanza. And then, then that can be a poem. You can't do a song like that because if it's all spoken like that and mm-hmm. you don't have to change anything, no he's gonna listen to that it's a yeah. spoken word poem like it's not you know and i think that's how it started was me thinking of it like that but then adding it's gonna sound cheesy but <laughs> adding like the kind of melody and the sound that sounded how i was feeling i okay. mean that's how i that's how like every song works but yeah 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 there was definitely places where i was adding a lot more cry in my voice i think than you do on a lot of other things just because that's how it feels. Like, I feel like adding a lot of extra crying your voice, it just makes things feel so much more emotional. Okay. I like, I don't, I don't know how I would like, cause like, of course that's how it works. Like that's, you know, you add emotion in the song where that's how it feels, but yeah, just the relationship between like certain sounds and feelings, even though there's no logical reason why they make sense. Is that something I want to give a shout out to Jody Farrell on this one? Because <laughs> that's something that you do really well. Um, did you learn that from her? Um, that's a great, like just adding a cry to your voice. Yeah. I think, I th- no, I think, I think I did that mimicking Adele. That was one of the things that okay. Jody actually helped me not do was everything. It's, it's allowed me to use my cry more is yeah. I used to sing everything as if I was mimicking Adele. I just didn't realize it. And she'd be like, okay, that okay. was a very British word. And this yeah, isn't a song yeah, yeah, that yeah, someone's yeah. British in. And, yeah. and that definitely helped me figure out how I could use it more when I was trying not to like sound exactly like Adele every time I sang something. Yeah, I definitely, now that you say that, having worked with you for the last like two years, I guess I've heard you like kind of leave that British vocabulary (laughs) and become more, um, um, you know, the songwriter. Yeah. So like the R and B songwriter that you are, that's cool. That's, that's, that to me is like the most interesting thing about, about like producing an artist and working with somebody like that is that they evolve and they change Mm -hmm. and, um, and the songs change and evolve. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a great observation. That's really yeah. cool. That's I've all really out cool. of the mimicry. Yeah. Because that's always, I think, especially when you're, like, first learning to sing, it's so easy yeah. to do it based on mimicry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then learning to, you know, find your own voice in it. I think for other, like, for some people it's different. I think for some people it's so easy for them to find their own voice. But I think a lot of the way that I like to learn in general is through mimicry, just yeah. in everything, in yeah. school and yeah. sports. It like, And so then, you know, unlearning that and finding your own voice for lack of <laughs> like better sure. term yeah, uh, becomes much harder. But then once you get that, you realize that you can use little things that you hear in other artists, but using them all separately, you know, it's not mimicry. That's like you making your own style kind of like that cry. It's it, like, to me, it's very Adele. It's very Adele. But yeah. you know, when I don't sound like her throughout the rest of the song, you know, it kind of becomes your own thing. You make little things from each artist, your own thing, like that little cry of Adele and, 
I really like, um, like Eloise has this almost like extra little like vibrato at the end or not like at the end, but she has this kind of like, I'm trying to think about how I explain it. That yeah. like you add into things. So there's and... like a there's like a t- the end of the phrase. Yeah. Um, if you think of a note as like a a shape, yeah, it has a particular vibrato. It has a particular it's crunchy attack and decay. <laughs> you know, Nina Simone had this incredible way of ending a phrase. Yeah. Right? You know, black is the color, and I'm not gonna try to do, but she <laughs> has an, this amazing ending vibrato. Mm-hmm. And especially in R&B, that's what becomes, like, really, really important. Mm-hmm. And you've got that. That's what you should, like, lean into mm-hmm. that's, that's really good and unique about, about your style. Um, okay, we got seven minutes. We've been working on this project for two years. I'm, we're going to wrap it up, but I want to wrap it up with the exciting, uh, you know, the exciting situation that, that the, the record's coming out. It's going to be really good. And you're leaving for college in a week. So yeah, it's not even tell me, crazy. just, just, just wrap it up here. Just tell me your thoughts on like this new stage of life and like, uh, what you're looking forward to. Cause it's cool. You're in the coolest stage right it's now. Gonna be funky. It's, it's fun. <laughs> so like, uh, what are you looking forward to about your new, where are you going and what are you looking forward to? Um, I'm going to university of Northern Colorado. So cool. I'm going to get weather. Cause we don't really get, we just, it's seventies yeah. all year around here. Yeah. I like the cold. So that's going to be. An adjustment. I think... You think you like the cold. Well... You like the cold in movies and when you've traveled there. Yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't (laughs) lived in the cold, but... um, So that's... That'll... I mean, that's always an adjustment, but... Yeah. I I think that I'll like it there. And it seems... The campus seems super nice. The people are super friendly. I actually... um, One of my coworkers from Finney's, apparently, that's his hometown. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. He, you know, he's offered to help me, like... um, Find a good job and good places to go cool. and stuff. Great. Um, That's great. Which is very nice. However, it's going to be weird being in charge of myself. That okay. is something that I have never had to do. <laughs> and <laughs> I love my mom, but there is no way she would have been like, yes, go be in charge of yourself. <laughs> like throughout yeah. high school. And so that's going to be the weird thing is like, I'm always like, like now I'm always like, all right, when's mom going to text me that I got to come home? All right, mm. what do I got to do? What I, And then going to be there, I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, I've got to be the one responsible for when I'm coming home. So there's that, oh, great, I can stay out later. But then there's also, okay, well, now I can't be like, yeah, my mom texted me. I got to go. Like, I have to find mm. another excuse to go home. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes that sometimes can be uh, a social a social excuse yeah. that you need to like go be responsible, right? Yeah. So you don't have that anymore. And <laughs> it was so reasonable for me. I was always like, yeah, yeah you know, I like, yeah. gotta go. You know, sick parents. Ah, uh, like, <laughs> yeah. but but I I can't do that anymore. I'm gonna have to be like responsible and be like, nope. You know what? I should go home and go to bed right now because I have to get up early. But <laughs> that is not gonna happen for a little while. I know me. I'm gonna be like, oh, but I I could just stay up till three, or I could pull an all nighter. Yeah, I, I could do it. I know. I know I could handle it, but I shouldn't. <laughs> and that's <laughs> the can versus should yeah. is a very that to me is a very thin line, and it shouldn't be as thin as it is because I I don't know. I I'm good, I'm gonna find that out the hard way. I find most things out the hard way because I'm stubborn, but. My mom loves to say that, you know, I cut my nose off despite my own face, which. Yeah. Uh, but I think right. you're very smart. You're, you're. Sometimes. No, I think you're very With smart. certain things, and so, I think. And, and so there will, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a learning curve there. But, oh, the learning curve But I think you're going to do so fine. Big. And it's, it's, uh, it's cool. It's cool. Um, it's cool just watching you, you know grow up and then do like the college thing and it's great it's cool it's cool so yeah. i'm glad i'm glad you're going to a good place and that you are feeling confident about it and um that you're going to experience snow instead of the beach yeah um I'm not a big beach person oh, and everyone man. always judges me for that and you like, live I don't here like, i know i don't love sand it's everywhere you don't get it out for weeks and it's like you, you, you don't just go to the beach once and there's no evidence of it. That sand is in everything you will ever own for the rest of your life off of one beach trip. Yeah. yeah. You don't sand. It's it doesn't everywhere. Stay at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> That's true about living by the beach. There is sand. <laughs> I, I went to the beach once, like two months ago. 
No, that's a lie. I I went beginning. No, last month. Sometime last month, and there was still sand all over my car. In your car, I wasn't yeah. even in the back seat. I yeah. don't know how there's sand in the back there. seat. Yeah, and it wasn't on anything I put in the back seat, but there's sand all over my back seat, and I will not miss that. I will not miss that sand. Well, now there's gonna be snow in your car, though. Yeah, but then, then it you know, melts, melts into water, into water mm -hmm. and then the water goes away. It does, or does it rot? So you might have to find well, out those things. It better not. <laughs> it better not do that to me. <sighs> I'm going to hope it doesn't, but the sand, oh, and like when you find it and it's in your shoe or it's in something, you're like, why is it even, how did it even get here? Oh, that's, that's the thing. That's what the, I don't know why that reminded me. My friends always make fun of me because I'm like the smartest one of the group, but also the dumbest. And therefore, I always have the best stories of me just in general yeah with a mix of me being smart but dumb and also my mom likes to say that we have some special little ability that strangers just feel like they can share their whole life stories with us interesting and a good example of that <laughs> is when gwen and i used to busk we people had would just walk you know, up yeah. plenty of people walking up you know we had our fair share of creepy old men but one in particular that i will never forget <laughs> is we were you know singing a song and this like six five, like really tall, like probably was like a football player or something back in his day. Mm -hmm. You know, old dude walks up and is telling us about, you know, you know, he likes our singing and like, do we song right? And you no, know, he used to song right. Can you sing us a little song? And we're like, okay, you know, this could be good or bad. Yeah. Well, it wasn't good. And, <laughs> oh, no. and he's like snapping to it and, you know, singing like, Something, something like, Opala, I love you. And then all of a sudden, just starts breaking down crying, like sobbing. This really? six foot five, like old man is really? just sobbing. Interesting. And then telling us that, you know, this is about his old love or whatever. He walked up with a woman and telling us he just stopped and she kind of walked around the corner, hmm. probably, you know, to avoid the buskers, which is fine. And <laughs> he's like still talking to us. <laughs> and but now he starts sobbing and is like, that was my old love. You know, like she died, blah, blah, blah. And the woman oh. is like, dude, come on. And wow. so the girl like comes and, you know, the woman comes and grabs him and like pulls him around the corner. And I'm like, I don't know if this is an event that occurs often enough that she's like, okay, we've had enough of this. Come on, stop crying on street hmm. corners. Or if it's like one of those things where she's like, really? Like if it was someone he was on a date with sure. that is now hearing about this. Either way, we were both like, what? are we supposed to do with that? And well, you got to see there, that go down. And that's interesting. All of it, oh my gosh. You see so much go down busking. It's crazy. Crazy. But it's one of those things that my mom and I always joke about that. And I think especially cause I was like a super quiet kid. People feel, felt like they could share things with me cause who am I going to share them with? Yeah. I think that was another thing that I had the advantage of learning. But the one tricky thing about that is because people share it so freely, it's hard to know what's like supposed to be, not necessarily a secret, but what mm. is held personal to them because people sometimes just share things. And they usually people things. will, you know, they'll kind of be like, okay, so like this is something about me and they make it obvious that, okay, this is something we keep as personal. But because people share things with my mom and I so like openly and freely, mm -hmm. sometimes it's so hard to tell, was this something that I was only meant to know and it was personal to me? Because we're not close enough that I have a good gauge of telling that. It's just that. like a stranger. Yeah. And I so, so many times I've that. spilled yeah. secrets. Not yeah. usually. If I know it's a secret, <clears throat> nobody's ever knowing about it. Yeah. Great at keeping them. However, if you spill it with me the mm -hmm. way that you would just throw it into any normal conversation, that's how I'm going to assume that you mean for it to be. And you were just telling me because we're not close. Yeah. So you're just telling me I'm a stranger. If I told someone else, you know, and it, there's been so many times I'm like, yeah, well, you know, so-and-so whatever. And they're like, what? I'm like, well, yeah, he just told me the other day. And he just like, told me the other day. We've been yeah. friends with him for like six years. He's never told us that. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Why do I know then? Why am I responsible for this now? <laughs> I mean, I think, um, I think that's just part of being an artist. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up with this. I, I think that, that that's just part of being an artist. And the, the job of an artist is to connect with uh, someone with, with where they're at. And so if you are uh, an artist, you are... You are inherently being a little bit more vulnerable than 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 the rest of what's going on, right? Because you you have the 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 gumption to to say something in your lyrics. Mm -hmm. So once people recognize that you have that uh, strength with, that you're that you're projecting, 
that becomes cool because people people react to that. And so I think as a as a musician, you do see that a lot, you know. And there's um, there's something cool to that. Um, and uh, I hope that that informs your college experience with lots of great friendships. Well, we'll <laughs> and see. Probably good and bad. Good and bad. Attract but, it all. Attract it all. But anyway, I look forward to having you back on, on the Christmas breaks and, and spring breaks and keeping in touch. But yes. um, the, the record's coming out. It's going to be great. And uh, I'm like, I'm really, I'm really proud of you. You know, all that you've done. It's Thank great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. High fives. All right. Cool. Oh. <laughs>